Hello, this is your captain speaking. We're an hour outside of Chicago with the temperatures at crisp 50 degrees under sunny skies. And we hope you enjoy the remainder of your flight on Northern Pacific, and we'll fly with us again soon. Can you cough your tea? Oh, uh, well, thank you. I think I'll be fine. Would you like another drink, sir? Oh, uh, no, thank you. I think I've had one too many as it is. Not yet. Well, then, could I ask you to return to your seat? The fasten seatbelt sign is on. I'm afraid there's somebody in my seat, the captain, but that should be changing about now. This is your new captain speaking. I thought I'd use this opportunity to point out one of the special features of this aircraft. For the last half an hour, you have all been breathing Quintoxin 12. The good news is, by itself, Quintoxin 12 is perfectly harmless. The bad news is, when crossed with its binary complement duotoxin, one drop of Quintoxin 12 is enough to do to a small city what it has just done to the gentleman in row T. You will never guess what I have in this bottle. What do you want from us? From you, I'd like a glass of champagne when you have a moment. From your government, I would like $25 million, or this plan will become the world's first flying cemetery.
Thought we came here for a workout. You did? Well, I just finished with 30 minutes of heavy calisthenics, ran six miles, and finished with an hour on the free weights. That's great. Good for you. Well, I've been pumping iron, you've been pumping paper. I've been reading a fascinating ethnomorphographic deconstruction of the Mephisto fallacy of sociopathic behavior. You call reading on a treadmill, sit at its lowest possible setting, a workout? I mean, look at you, you're not even sweating. Well, you have to keep yourself intellectually fit as well as physically. A textbook isn't gonna help you chase down a killer who's running away from you. No. But with a sharp mind, maybe you wouldn't have to run. You could anticipate his next move and be waiting for him. You know, you gotta be tough to survive out there, and you are. Toughness isn't just measured by muscle mass, you know. It's a sharp mind. Strength of character, self-confidence, all of which I happen to have in spades. But you see, out there in the real world, it's a different story. Oh, really? So have you tested this theory? Yes, I have. Okay. Okay. If you want tough, I'll give you tough. Two-day wilderness trek this weekend, you and me. Is this a challenge? If you're tough enough. I'm always up for a relaxing nature walk. Uh, I am talking about rough terrain, unpredictable weather, and complete, complete isolation from society. You are. I'll grab my gear and pack the car. I don't think you understand, tough guy. See, we're not packing it here. It's just you and me against the elements. That is, if you can hack it. Hack it? Chicago International Airport, scene of a terrifying hostage crisis. An unidentified hijacker is threatening to kill all the passengers unless he receives $25 million. We can only imagine the terror the passengers inside the plane are feeling. By now, your FBI lab has tested the air sample that I allowed you to take from the plane. What does it tell you? It tells me you're a psychopath, but not a liar. You're a very perceptive judge of character, don't you? No wonder they put you in charge. Now, where is my money? Look, we need more time. Well, that puts me in a bit of a bind, because normally I'd kill a passenger for every minute of delay. But this is an all or nothing situation, and I do mean nothing. You'll die too. Kind of puts a hitch in your brilliant strategy, don't you think? Yes, well, better dead than poor, I suppose. I guess I'm just not adjusting to the 90s very well. You have two hours. Touring an office building is not the kind of action we had in mind. Patience, Floyd, patience. This is a surprise gift for scandal. I just had delivered a small token of appreciation for a job well done. But there's no reason on earth why we can't break it in. Well, what are we going to do, throw a dinner party? Hey, 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 hey. Where are the chips and the dip? What, I got to think of everything? <laughs> turn left. I did turn left. No, you didn't. You turned right and then you turned left. You don't know how to read a map. And you have no sense of direction. The road we're on isn't even on the map. Oh, great. The radiator's cracked. Don't slam the door. Great. No problem with the radiator. I'll just call the auto club. There's no signal. Well, guess we have to walk to the ranger station on Devil's Peak. Oh, 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 oh. The first rule when your car breaks down in the middle of nowhere is to stay with the vehicle. What? Can't hack it? 
It's 40 miles through rough terrain to Devil's Peak. We should wait here for help. So it's a long walk. Look, the sooner we get started, the sooner we get there. I know it's harder for you to sit still for a couple of hours than it is to scale a mountain, but it's the smart thing to do. Fine. You stay. I'll walk. Go. Second rule is you never split up. What are the odds of somebody just driving by? I mean, you wanted a mountain endurance exercise. Well, this is it. Okay. You're right. You're absolutely right. Good. We'll, we'll leave a note in the car with uh, our destination and Dallas's phone number. All right. <sighs> there. Now it's just you and me against the elements. Let's go. It's a tense situation here at Chicago International Airport where a special FBI tactical assault team has been deployed around Northern Pacific Flight 2311. We're here with Special Agent Claire Kilburn, who is the FBI agent in charge of the hostage negotiation. Agent Kilburn, why has the FBI been so vague about the nature of the terrorist threat? Does he have a bomb? No comment. Can you tell us how... You Frisbees always were a witty bunch. One ball. Side pocket. What about the rumors that this terrorist may also be the mastermind behind last year's Virginia Arsenal heist? No comment. How about reports that... <sighs> Three ounces of quintoxin twelve were stolen from the Virginia Arsenal. What, he's threatening him with cough syrup? Quintoxin 12? <laughs> That's a little potion cooked up by a resident mad scientist over at the Pentagon. We spritz the enemy with quintoxin 12, our troops waltz in, douse them with dual toxin, bad guys drop dead and our boys are fine. And no toxic residue. Well, aren't you glad you're retired? Yeah, you got that right, Floyd. I'm a pool hustler now. And just to prove it to you, this shot's gonna cost you the game plus 50 bucks. Damn! Uh, will that be cash, check, or charge? <laughs> no way in the world I should miss that shot. What? You found the Cobra? Where? You tired? No. Well, the workout this morning may have worn me down a tiny bit. Aw, oh, a few laps around the block shouldn't poop out a Navy SEAL. Didn't. And I'm haven't eaten, I'm starving. Ah. What'd you pack for dinner? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing? No. This is an endurance exercise, remember? We have to live off the land. Oh. The land. Yes. Fine. What are you looking for? Golden arches. <laughs> And with the money delivered and the plane fully fueled, Northern Pacific Flight 2311 is taking off from Chicago, heading west. Well, I took some time. Chased them off through the canyon, but I caught us some dinner. You know, you gotta be pretty fast on your feet to catch one of these turkeys. <sighs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Kind of grouse. How? Sitting on a rock watching the sunset. I set a trap and I waited. Mmm. That's nice. Yeah, not bad. Hmm, you know, maybe we should have engine problems more often. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not as tough as your looks, Gando. Thanks. I think. <laughs> well, we hit the trail at dawn. We have a lot of ground to cover before we get to Devil's Peak. So you're gonna need to rest. Yep. I hope right. you don't expect me to slow down for you.
Nothing has decreased speed and lowered the altitude as you asked. How considerate of him. Everyone's been so polite to me. Must be something in the air. See you in Switzerland. I'll have a brandy waiting. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, um, please fasten your seat belts, uh, close your tray tables and bring your seats to their full upright position. We're about to experience a sudden loss of cabin pressure. You know, it's been a pleasure flying Northern Pacific Airlines, and uh, I'll try to keep them in mind when making future travel plans. Tracy, the flat top, come in. Flat top here. Did you have a nice trip? Yeah, the wind blew me slightly off court. It sounded like it was over this way. I've got visitors. Stand by while I take care of them. Well, he's not carrying any identification on him. All he's got on him is a Northern Pacific plane ticket made out to a Joe Smith. One way from New York to Chicago. And a Northern Pacific bag stuffed with millions of dollars in cash. Looks like we got us a hijacker. What do you think we should do? Same thing we were doing before. We head for the ranger station and call for help. <laughs> Let's go. And he leaped out of the plane carrying $25 million. Although authorities have been unable to pinpoint his exact location, the hijacker... Just Did you contact the Rangers and let them know where to look for Scandal and Danielle? They believe he's somewhere in Evergreen State Park, one million acres of the most difficult terrain in the West Coast. Campers are advised to stay clear of the park until the Evergreen State been Park. Now that's where Scandal and Danielle are. Thanks, Claudine. Find me Special Agent Claire Kilburn. Now. Room face the flat top. Flat top here. I've killed a camper and left his body in the brush where he can be found. He's got a jeep. Okay, good. Drive the jeep into town, park it where it will be discovered, and don't forget to leave behind the map. Money's on the move. Ten miles ahead. Shouldn't take us long. OK, listen up. We got a million acres of forest here. Two rivers cut across it and the edge of one mountain range. 
There are two to three dozen known access roads, most of them unmapped. Coordinate with the Forest Service. I want agents in ATVs and choppers patrolling each one of these roads. Oh, and get me something to eat, would you? Something greasy. Okay, the freeway cuts across the northeastern corner of the park. We're putting roadblocks here, here, and here. I want agents in Walnut Creek, Button Willow, Lenawee, and Pine Valley, and any other town within 25 miles of the park. Kilburn. Dallas Casalier, FBI Special Agent, retired. Now I work for an organization that... Viper. Yeah, I know who you are. This is a red line. How'd you get this number? No, it's Coburn. We'll swap secrets later. Right now, I got a problem. Yeah? Well, I got a homicidal maniac lost in 10,000 square miles of forest with 25 mil Uncle Sam was saving for his retirement. What's yours? I got two more people in there lost and unarmed. And if they've run into Jared Krill, they're already dead, pal. There's nothing I can do about it. How'd that number changed immediately? And where's my food? All right, fire up the COVID chopper and get me a complete background check on Gerard Krell, K-R-I-L-L. -L. Do you have any idea how much $25 million weighs? You couldn't have been so greedy. Well, you could lighten the load by a million or two, buy yourself a house, maybe a station wagon, start a college fund for the kiddies, perhaps? <laughs> You're not married. Not interested in your money, either. Well, what are you interested in? Silence. And you? I want to see you stand trial for your crimes. <laughs> Not often do you find somebody so innocent and idealistic. Unfortunately, you're always the first to die. We are right on top of them. Fan out and shoot anyone you see. Does that include Krill? He dies, you die. Do we understand each other? Go. You know, I was caught once before, although it embarrasses me to admit it. This young Mossad spy was supposed to bring me a smidgen of plutonium. As it turned out, he still had an allegiance to the old-fashioned notion of patriotism. Be quiet. I left him chained to a rock in the desert so the vultures could tear out his liver. Not that that should worry you two. Young Prometheus was only a trained Israeli spy. Can't see how I could get away from a couple of wilderness scouts like yourself. We've reached the end of the trail. Where do we go from here? What is it? We're not alone. Jump! can't get down without repelling gear. We're gonna have to hike down the canyon. It'll give them two or three hours on us. Well, if they survive the fall, not that it matters. They're not moving. Sweetheart. Ah. Oh. Damn it, how they find us? The same way they'll find you next time. <laughs> but next time you won't be so lucky. <laughs> 
textbook example of the Mephisto fallacy of sociopathic behavior. Too bad you didn't bring your book with us. Why? To show us how to deal with them? To hit them with. Oh, come on, you're not actually thinking of giving this guy the money. Oh, tracking device. Yeah. My guess is he put it in a bag in case he dropped the money when he jumped. Or to help his accomplices locate him in the middle of the forest. It won't be so easy to find anymore. There. We need to rest. We can't. They're right behind us. I know that, but you're in no condition to outrun them. Listen, if I take the tracking device, I can lead the others away. That'll give you a chance to get to the ranger station. Contact the authorities and turn them in. Come on. That's too dangerous. As opposed to what? I know you would, too. Listen. I'm gonna take the transmitter down to the river. And I'm gonna attach it to a log and send it down the river. Oh. And then I'll double back in your direction. I can make it. I will be fine. I can make it. Oh, it's okay. Danny. Danny. Oh. Danielle! Danielle! So we ambush him at the ranger station. Which ranger station? There must be half a dozen in equal distance from here. We may not know where they're going, but we do know where to find her. What the hell is that? This is restricted airspace. I don't know, ma'am, but they dropped someone off at the clearing 50 yards due west of your present location. I'm gonna set the chopper when it lands. I wanna see the pilot interrogation when I get back. Don't move. It's about time you got here. Dallas Castle, FBI special agent. Retired. You better have a damn good explanation for this, or so help me, I'll have you arrested for interfering in a federal investigation. My people, Scandal Jackson and Danielle Point were driving up at Access Road in Fawn Valley yesterday when the car broke down, so they left me a note. Some off-roader found it, gave me a call. Could I have the Reader's Digest version, please? They were heading for the ranger station up at Devil's Peak, so I figure they take the most direct route, they make about four miles an hour, they'd get to this area, they'd spend in here overnight. That's probably where they ran into your hijacker. Then their bodies are probably close by. Mercy is not one of Jared Krill's qualities. Jared Krill, Oxford educated, certified genius, diagnosed sociopath, responsible for some of the most vicious and daring crimes ever committed on the face of the earth. And he's never been captured. You've kept up since your retirement. How nice. Now why don't you go back to your mobile home and your shuffleboard and leave this to us professionals. I have a couple agents back here. Okay, you want to get her on that side? Watch the marking. Help these guys out. Whoa! Why should I bother her, man? She's never gonna make the rendezvous. Yeah, well, she'll make it. Oh. Sure she will. I mean, it's hardly as if she's got four crack guerrilla warriors following a tracking device telling them exactly where she's going to be, is it? They lay one hand on her. Chances are she'll probably fall down a crevasse or be mauled by a bear long before she ever makes the river. But if she does happen to find my boys first, I'm sure they'll treat her like a princess. I mean, they haven't had a woman in months. She'll be there. I'm not sure whether to believe you or those buzzards circling overhead. Yeah. No! Thank God. And these men with guns. 
they, they came out of the trees and they killed my husband. I don't know where I am anymore. Please, please, you've got to help me. Is that exactly? Searing? White hot? Don't worry about it. I can lick it. I wouldn't bet on that. As a matter of fact, I'm betting against it. You're in shock. You've lost a lot of blood. You're already weak and sluggish. Maybe even a bit dizzy. But sooner or later, you're gonna fall. And when you do, I'm going to break your neck. I'm going to smash your head in with a rock, perhaps. What if they come back for us? What if they find us? Don't worry, by now they're a long ways down the river. Well, how can you be sure? Because it's not us they want, it's their bag of money, and they think it's flowing towards Buttonville right about now. But then they'll think it's a trick, and they will come back and find us. It's all right, okay? Don't worry. Trust me. Krill's accomplice, a flight attendant on her way to Switzerland. If we're going to meet in Stad in two days, which means Krill's got to make his move out of the area tonight. Krill's not going anywhere. I thought I told you to go home. If you can't find your way back on your own, I'll provide an escort. Why? Now, my guess is Krill's going to head for Interstate 180 and then go north. Why would he want to go anywhere? That's what you'd expect him to do. He's going to do the opposite. A few minutes ago, we discovered the body of a dead camper. He was killed at the north end of the park. His jeep turned up in Lenawee, and there was a map on the passenger seat with Krill's fingerprints all over it. Krill has left the forest. He's too smart to do something like that. It's a trick. He's going to sit tight. And when you guys are waltzing off to Switzerland or someplace where he might have left you a crumb, he'll just bide his time, and when he's ready, he just waltz right out of the forest with nobody waiting for him. You expect me to believe that Krill is going to camp out here roasting marshmallows instead of slipping away to Europe and living high on his millions? Why not? If I was him, I'd lose myself in that forest. Absolutely. I'd have stocked it up with provisions, last for weeks, maybe months. Someplace like an abandoned gold mine. That's not his style. Exactly. The good ones always zag when they should zig. You know what I mean? I've had plenty of experience with this kind of thing. Yeah, right, in the Stone Age. Listen, Hoover is dead. The commies have gone. We got a president who sings with Carly Simon. The game has changed a lot since you played it. The moves are different, and so are the players. I'm telling you, He's headed for Sutter's mine. Look, could we get retired Special Agent Castle, a Jeep, and directions back to the highway? You set foot in this area again, and I'll have you arrested. Oh, and don't forget to fill up the gas tank when you're through, or I'll have to charge you extra. Oh, yes, ma'am. And I'll be happy to fill your tank as well. I don't think you're going to make it, mate. Day feels like it'll go on forever. Sun scorching down. These trails keep getting steeper and steeper. Throats on fire. Skin is dry. And every step is like climbing a mountain.
pathetic. Vic Tracy to flat topper finished my nature tour and met me at Sutter's Mine. Dick Tracy, the flat top, come in. Where are you? Morgana's with the girl. We thought she'd lead us to you. I'll kill the girl. And be quick about it, too. We've wasted enough time to do Watch it there, it's a little slippery. Is it much farther? We've got a little more climbing to do. Krill has been taken. Krill's escaped. He's meeting us at the mine. All right. We'll let her go then. There's nothing she can do to stop us now anyway. It's okay. I took my mind off my leg. Where's Krill? He's in an abandoned mine not too far from here. Oh. What should we do? You're gonna get their attention. Over here. Nice toy. Where'd you learn to make that? I read it in a book. Something about David and Goliath. <laughs> Where'd you learn how to throw a right hook? Something I picked up. Ah! You, I'm going to kill. Her, I'm not so sure about. What do you think? Should I cripple her for life or just kill her now? Go for it. Be my guest. Be much more fun than killing you where you stand. 
Oh, don't worry. You won't die in vain. I'll try to remember you in my memoirs. <laughs> you missed. <laughs> That's your duo toxin for you. Perfectly harmless, unless, of course, you've inhaled quintoxin 12 within the last day or so, like this unfortunate fella. How'd you find us? I figured he'd be hiding here, but you know, I went to the other end of the mine a couple of miles north. Well, you can't win them all. Uh, at least you win when it counts. <laughs> so, how was your weekend? Uh, are, we, are we having fun yet? Uh, oh. something this weekend mm. oh I sure did <clears throat> that women are every bit as tough as men that strength is measured not by one's muscles but by one's character oh I learned that I should never go camping with a psychotic hijacker <laughs> yeah or take a swan dive off a cliff you look you still got a leg and doc says if you want to keep it you're gonna have to stay put in this apartment for at least a week look it's just a scratch I mean there's no way I'm gonna leave this completely healed. Did the doctor say a week? I could have sworn he said two weeks. Maybe three. <laughs> <laughs> 